Good day fellow investors, a century or better to say a century and a half of stock market history. We continue with our discussion on the intelligent investor and Benjamin Graham's view on the world of investing, his view in 1972 and we are trying to apply his everlasting knowledge and wisdom to the current market situation. The main point Graham emphasizes where we can learn so much from history are the following in chapter 3 of the book. The varying relationship between stock prices and their earnings and dividends is crucial to understand if you are a long-term investor. Varying relationship. I emphasize the varying. It is important to understand the manner in which stocks have made their underlying advance through the many cycles of the past century and look at 10-year average earnings. 10-year average dividends and 10-year average stock prices. So Graham's take on the stock market when looking from the 1901 till 1971 period is that there have been 19 bear markets with declines from 15 to 86, yes, 86 and 89% for the S&P 500. This was the 1929-1933 period, 89% down. So Graham says that we have to really be careful what's going on, accept the volatility, accept the declines and even take advantage of other people's stupid actions by us not doing stupid things. Let's dig into the book. So this is the chart from the chapter and Graham describes distinct patterns in the above stock market performance. From the 1900 till 1924, Three to five year market cycles were the norm with the average return of just 3% per year over 24 years. The dividend was pretty much higher, but that was a different era then. 1924 to 1929, the crazy bull market that resulted in the 1929-1933 beer market. What is very interesting is that the 1920s were the roaring 1920s, one of the best eras in human history. So after times are good, usually the consequences aren't that good and the debt ratios were also extremely high. Then from 1933 to 1949, there were a lot of fluctuations, but the Dow and the S&P 500 reached the 1924 level only 25 years later. And in 1949, there was absolutely no enthusiasm for stocks at all. So that's something difficult to understand now that we are all crazy about stocks. 1949-1961, greatest bull market in history with two short dips in 1957 and 1962, similarly to 2000 and 2008. Rings a bell? Well, then the stock market advanced sixthfold in 17 years or 11% per year. Now, 1971, Graham's comment is few people have been bothered by the thought that the very extent of the rise might indicate it had been overdone. He means the bull market. Apart from the interesting stock price movements, B Graham urges us with extreme importance, even more important than the, than the stock price movements, to look at earnings, dividends and fundamentals and look at them from a 10-year average perspective. So the average P ratio goes from 9.5 when it was great to buy stocks to levels of 18.1 when it wasn't that great to buy stocks for the long term. So always the price earnings ratio, the CAPE ratio, psychically adjusted price earnings ratio that uses 10 year averages tells you a big story. Then it's very interesting that the average dividend yield went from 6% down to 3.3% and now we are at 2%. So the dividend yield went down in history. Further, what is crucial for long-term investors, and you will love it if you're a long-term investor, in the nine analyzed decades, only two decades have seen negative earnings growth. So on the whole, stocks will deliver positive returns, positive earnings, positive growth over the long term. This is what we learned from the past 150 years of stock market history. So the message from the above is stocks will deliver growth over time, only two out of nine decades have seen decline in earnings and price earnings ratio went from 6.3 in 1949 to 22.9 in 1961. Dividends fell from 7% to 3% even if bond yields went from 2.5 to 4.5%.
So Grant describes it as the most remarkable turnaround in the public's attitude in all stock market history. Similarly, now in 1982, the price to earnings ratio was 7, 7 point something. Now we are at 25. In the meantime, bond yields did drop, so stocks are much more attractive. We'll see what happened next. Let's see what Gra Graham has to say about the stock market level in 1972, which is similar to where we are now or where we will be in a few years as the top was reached, I think 1966 in Graham's era. Graham discusses how old standards of valuation appear inapplicable while new haven't yet be been tested by time. The S&P 500 was at 100 points and what Graham focuses on is that bonds yielded twice as much as stocks. The case was opposite in 1949 when it was the best time to buy stocks. Further, Graham warned investors that they should be prepared for difficult times ahead. Was he right? You bet it. He got it correctly that stocks are dangerous and to show how prescient he was, it took the S&P 500 10 years to surpass the previous level and the 47 drop in between with huge inflation levels in the decade. Before applying Graham insight in onto the current market, let's see what happened from 1982. The S&P 500 went up 25 times from 1982. So the stock market re really resembles the era when Graham was writing his book and the last book edition. So we are, go are we going to see 10 years of negative earnings? Are we going to see 10 years of negative returns? Or the S&P 500 will continue to grow, grow and grow? Nobody knows the answers. The key, the only thing we can do is to be prepared for both opportunities and both outcomes. However, to keep Graham in mind, we could quote Graham, according to current valuations, the investor should be prepared for difficult times ahead. So difficult times ahead, that cycle, like it was in 1929, 1930s, we are there. So there are also economics as a headwind, but that's another story. Let's see what are the four main takeaways from Graham's chapter three. So the first takeaway is that stock market returns in the long run are dictated by earnings and the price earnings ratio is your best friend. The CAPE ratio is even better friend. There is a link above with my description of what the CAPE ratio is. The second takeaway is that there are periods when nobody wants to touch stocks with a 10 foot pole. Think 1932, 1949, 1974, 1982. And there are periods where everybody is an investor. Even your neighbor is an investor looking at stocks, cryptocurrencies, whatever. It's interesting how there are these cycles in the public's perception on what's going on in the stock market and whether stocks are good. Usually stocks are good and positively appreciated by the public after a 30 year bull market run. When there is a 10 year negative returns, then nobody likes stocks, too risky, crazy. So think about in that perspective and what you're gonna do about it. The third takeaway is that long-term stock returns will be around 4% given the current price earnings ratio of 25 and cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio of 32. These things always balance out in the long term. So you might see stocks go up further than decline, but 4% is what we can expect over the long term if you invest generally in stocks now. Note, if the stock market crashes 50, 60, 70%, that would be a blessing for most of you who are watching because then you could buy dollar cost average into much, much cheaper prices, much, much higher yields, much, much better economics that will let you accumulate much more wealth over time. So if the stock market crashes 50, 70% tomorrow, we should all, especially if we are younger than 75, we should all take it as a blessing. The fourth thing to take away is that what happened in the past doesn't have to happen at all in the future. And the only thing we can do is being prepared. I don't want to scare you. Tomorrow I'll go through some comments of yours on some videos to maybe clarify some things and not trying to scare people. I'm trying to prepare people so that we can sleep well, whatever happens. The stock market goes up another tenfold in the next 20 years, great. The stock market crashes 80%, great. That's my investing message. And that's also Graham's investing message. The key is to sleep well, whatever happens in relation to the risk reward. Looking forward to your comments. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.